Good afternoon and welcome back to Jacobs Field in Cleveland, Ohio. A beautiful afternoon for baseball here in Cleveland and another sellout crowd. Boy, they have been packing them in here for the Tribe games all season long for that matter. They're averaging just about 39,000 per ball game. And there's Charles Nagy, very talented Cleveland right-hander who will be starting for the Tribe this afternoon. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at the American League Central standing Sox clinging to a one game lead now over the tribe 58 and 38 as compared to Cleveland's record of 56 and 38 Kansas City at 50 and 47 is eight and a half games back but the Sox will travel to Kansas City at the conclusion of this ball game and open up a four game series at Kauffman Stadium tomorrow night Minnesota 13 games back there's six games under since that four game sweep of the White Sox at the Metrodome they have fallen on hard times. Milwaukee brings up the rear 13 and a half games back. They are seven games under the 500 mark. So the White Sox six and five on the year against the tribe as you look at the sellout crowd. Boy, perfect weather here in Cleveland. Thursday and Friday was very hot and humid and it rained just before game time, but we had no rain delays. And yesterday it was a perfect afternoon for baseball. And let's look at our between the lines for today. Alex has got to establish that fastball inside. He has struck out 23 batters in his last 16 innings of work. And he has been dominating with the fastball, but he's got to throw it inside. Every one of these Cleveland hitters stands right on top of the plate, and they're looking dead red all the way. Cleveland run for the money. I'll tell you that Kenny Lofton is leading the charge. Well, he just, they're getting on base, putting a lot of hit and runs on. Very aggressive base running team, plus they've got some power to back that up. Sox get back to bases. The, the uh, defense has not been good. Pitching has not been good. And execution has not been good on offense as well. So the Sox trying to improve on those things today. As you look at Old Glory, temperature 80 degrees at game time. Wind out of the west at 12. Cloudy chance of rain. Oh, no, it never, ever rains here in Cleveland. So the Indians have taken the field for the final game of this series. And let's take a look at Gene Lamont's starting lineup for this afternoon. Leading off at second base, Joey Cora batting second and left, Tim Raines. Frank Thomas is the DH this afternoon. He'll hit third. Cleanup man is first baseman Julio Franco. Robin Ventura swinging the bat very well is at third, hitting fifth, followed by center fielder Darren Jackson. Warren Newsom is in right. He'll hit in the seventh spot. Michael Vallier is behind the plate, hitting eighth and bringing up the rear at shortstop. Ozzie Guillen. Charles Nagy, 8 and 6 on the year with a 19 starts, is 3.48 earned run average. He has three complete ball games to his credit. Charles has given up 144 hits and 139 and two thirds innings. 39 walks, so he has had very good control. 94 strikeouts, so he can definitely punch you out. American League is batting 265 against Nagy in the 94 season. Defensively, the Tribe lines up with Albert Bell in left field. Kenny Lofton, why don't you take a day off? He's in center. What a player he has been. Manny Ramirez, their youngster in right. Jim Tomey is at third base. Omar Vizquel can play some shortstop. Alvaro Espinosa at second and Paul Sorrento at first. A battery of veteran Tony Pena and Charles Nagy. The umpires are friends in blue. Rocky Rowe, the crew chief at home. Tim McClellan at first. Dale Scott at second. And Tim Cheetah is at third. We are ready to roll. Here's the Huckaroo. All right, Wimpy, thank you. And once again, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to beautiful Jacobs Field for White Sox baseball finale of this four-game set. First pitch to Joey Cora. Fastball over the outer half. Cora hitting at 285. A couple of homers. He's knocked in 28. Four for 14 in this series with two runs knocked in. There's a bud popped up. Sorrento's there. And the lead man down. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. See what Charles Nagy did in his last start against Texas on Tuesday. Beat him. Eight solid innings. Gave up seven hits, three runs, one walk, six strikeouts. So he has pitched well. One out, and here's Tim Raines. Rock hitting at 261. Ten homers. He's knocked in 47. Rock, three for 13 in this series with a homer. And four RBIs. Outfield. Shading him just a bit to the left. 
pitch high off the plate. There you see the way the Indians defend Reigns. Tommy on the grass. Torino a few steps in at first. 325 down each line here at Jacobs Field. 370 in left center. 375 in right center. And 405 dead away center field. And this is indeed a launching pad. But when there is today, brisk breeze blowing in from left to right. First two days it was blowing out. A couple of balls hit yesterday, though, especially one by Alomar that was hammered and did not go out of here. That ball hit hard. Espinosa sucks it up. And that's out number two. You think that's a little bit better hitting place than that? Remember when you were a tribesman? Yeah, that old I remember ballpark that. And they had the fences way back. Yeah, I remember that. A little easier to hit him out here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Here's Big Frank. Frank hitting at 376, 35 homers. He's knocked in 87. Frank four for 11 in this series with a homer, and he's knocked in three as Pena to the inside. Fastball up and in. And let's check out our picks to click. Jumanji, our producer director, went with Rock. Went with Ozzy. I went with Robin. There's a fastball strike. Playing to the outside. Paints it. The ball and two strikes. Slider. And that'll do it. A one, two, three inning for Charles Nagy. After having a play, it's the Sox nothing and the tribe coming up. Center field. He's been fun to watch. I mean, I don't care what side you're pulling for. This guy has been fun to watch out there play. That fastball foul back. Here's the Sox on defense. Range Jackson and Newsom in the outfield. Ventura Guy and Cora Franco make up the infield and the battery of Michael Vallier and Alex Fernandez. Boston, four for ten lifetime against Alex as the corner's in close. Pitch upstairs and the count two and one. Often 54 stolen bases. There's a good strike. Kenny leading the major leagues and hits with 140. And it's still July. That's real good. I'll speed pitch up high. Full count. What was the most hits you ever had in one year? I don't know. Not 140. I think I had 156 one year. Uh huh. <laughs> that was you for the were, whole year. You were on Here fire. We're still. Yeah, rocket right to Franco. Wow. Meanwhile, hang with him. We got him now. The shortstop number 14. Boy, does he get the head out here? You, know, you play this guy to hit the opposite way, but every once in a while, he'll turn on a ball, he'll hit it out of the ballpark, or he'll undress an infielder. He almost did that to Franco right there. Thank goodness he was standing right there. Here's Omar Vizquel hitting a 278 a homer. He's knocked in 23. Three for 12 in this series. Breaking ball misses. Again, the corners in close. Outfield swung around to the left. Is that curveball over? And the count evens at one. Reigns in left. Jackson in center. Newsom in right. Boy, a huge gap out there in right center. That fastball, he's tardy. That'll be a souvenir left side. So the final meeting of the year between these two clubs. Sox hold a 6-5 season series edge. They have played five games here at Jacobs Field. Indians hold a 3-2 edge. In the opener on Thursday, Sox won it six to five behind Wilson Alvarez. 
been in a bad ball game on Friday. Tribe won it nine to eight. Been in a bad game on Saturday. It was 11-2 behind Jason Grimsley. 80 him up right there. Good pitch in on the fist. Cora sucks it up, throws him out. Two down. 132. You had 132 is your high? Yep. And you? I didn't play very much. That was a strike here too. I thought you had close too. to 200 one. No, no. You mean like it, Duke? Yeah, yeah right. A, you're fun to watch. Oh. That was perception you gave. No, I'm on a golf cart. I usually swing it about 200 times on the course. Here's Jim Tomey. Tomey hitting at 257. 18 homers. He's knocked in 47. You don't think this guy's been hot in his last 12 ball games? Has eight homers. And he's knocked in 14. That's what he's doing in this series. Five for ten. All three of those homers coming on Friday. He's two for nine lifetime against Alex. And one of those two left the premises. Change up. Misses. Field. Equidistant. Swung around to the right. There's a bullet hit in the center field. Darren Jackson goes back. It's off the fence. As he gets it back in. Ooh, that ball was scalded. That was like a Frank Thomas shot right there. Well, the count dictated this swing right here. Told me, let it all hang out. Lord have mercy. He just kills this one. Fastball. Out over the plate about Bell tie and Darren Jackson had no chance to even move. Look, it almost knocked down that screen by the Cleveland bullpen. That got out there in a heartbeat. Thank goodness he didn't get any elevation. Now that one goes over on Euclid Avenue. So two out, Tommy at second. Here's Albert Bell. He's having a pretty good series. Five for 11, a couple of homers. He's knocked in eight. In his last seven games, he has four homers and 12 RBIs. No fastball pops him up. Stay in here. Lavalier over by the Sox dugout. It'll be back into the first row. I've got a whole lot of foul ground here at Jacobs Field, which makes it even that much better of a hitter's ballpark. Oh, a good pitch by Alex. Jam the daylight out of him. And Alex. Got two more strikes to deal with right here. Look what he's done against the Sox in 42 at bats. Four homers, 13 driven in. 357. Whoa. There's a chopper, two hopper, Ozzy. Easy play. Over to Franco, and it'll do it. Nothing across. There was a hit, no errors. One man left after one. No score. Well, here's the pitching profile on Charles Nagy. Cleveland Hurler is fastball 87 and 90. He's got good movement on that curves, change up slider and splitter. So there's a big repertoire right there for the very talented Cleveland starter. Julio Franco will lead it off. It'll be Franco Ventura and Darren Jackson. Franco hitting at 318. 16 homers. He's knocked in 83. Looks at it low and inside. She's having a tough series. Just three for 15 with no runs knocked in. Chops that one foul. And the count evens at one. Franco in 11 lifetime at bats against Nagy is 5 for 11. There's a two hopper to Tommy. And the lead man down. 
And a reminder on Friday, July 29th, the first 20,000 fans entering the ballpark for the White Sox game against the Mariners will receive a pinstripe White Sox cap compliments of all the good folks at Insure One. Same time is 7.05, and tickets can be purchased by calling 312-831-1-SOX. Here's Robin Ventura. Robin has his average up to 285 to go along with those 16 homers and 70 knocked in. Having a good series, he is 8 for 12. Takes the ball. He also has done some damage against Nagy, 11 for 28. Breaking ball strike, and the count evens at one. Now I feel bunched straight up. Bit of a gap in right center. There's a bunt going foul. He stays fair. Base hit. But no. That was an easy base hit. Tommy's playing way over towards shortstop and back. Now one thing about it, I don't blame Tommy for playing way over towards shortstop and back. Robin against the right-handed pitcher. One out here. Put a point on the board. Yeah. You're right. Important for the Sox to get some momentum going. Yes. Scoring the first run is very important in this ball game. You're right. Bring it to the outside. Breaking ball. He's gone. Here's some baselines for this afternoon. Sox are six and five against the Tribe in '94. Final game of the season this afternoon. Cleveland has hit 18 homers in the last five games. And the Sox are 15 and 6 in the month of July. One of the reasons is this guy right here, Darren Jackson. Hitting at 317, 10 homers. He's knocked in 48. Five for eight in this series. Takes a fastball strike. He has not had a whole bunch of success against Nagy in 12 at bats, just one hit. That means he's two. Oh, it does. Or it do. <laughs> it do. <laughs> oh, and to the count. You got that attitude about it when you know you haven't had any success against the guys you look at more nuisance on deck. Of course, that pitcher knows it too, so he's a little bit freer and easier knowing that he can get you out. Didn't he? Ooh, man. Good pitch right there. That's yeah, low and outside. Tell you what, Nagy is dealing today. Wow. Six in a row with three strikeouts for Charles Nagy after an inning and a half, no score. When we say dodging, here's the pitching profile on Alex Fernandez. Alex, fastball between 91 and 93, has the four basic pitches, curve, slider, and changeup, whichever one of those last three is working best he'll use more than the other two but that fastball has got to be his number one pitch it'll be murray ramirez and sereno to face young alex no score here in the bottom of the second Murray hitting at 262, 14 homers. He's knocked in 68. There's a breaking ball strike. Two for 13 in this series and lifetime against Alex. He is 0 for 7. Thirty-eight-year-old veteran. Now the curve ball. This one a little bit low, and the count evens at one. Okay, a drag and carry from Hanover Park. They usually make several road trips with the Sox during the course of the season. A big White Sox hello to drag and carry from Hanover Park. There's a good fastball. One and two.
Now field playing Murray to hook. Just slightly. Checks it up. Ventura on the run. Can't make the play. Well, here's the replay of this check swing by Eddie Murray. It came up a little bit at the end. Right there, the final bounce got Robin in the heel of his glove, and he's not able to come up with it. Right there. Or may have even gotten him on the wrist as Eddie Murray check swings. He's an easy out if Robin can make the play. May have rushed a little bit because, you see, Eddie's on his heels right there. There's no way he can get out of the batter's box. So the 17th error of the year committed by Ventura. And here's Ramirez. Hitting at 253, 13 homers, he's knocked in 47. Takes a strike on the outside corner. Manny 0 for 3 lifetime against Alex. In this series, he's 2 for 7 with an RBI. Yes. Nothing into the count. Other American League action will show Seattle at Boston, Kansas City, and Detroit. Rangers against the Blue Jays at Sky Dome, Minnesota at Milwaukee, Yankees against the Angels in California, and Baltimore at Oakland. Just got a piece of that. Over in the National League, Dodgers take on the Expos in Montreal, San Diego at Philadelphia, the Giants against the Mets in New York, Cincinnati at Chicago, Pittsburgh at Houston, and the fighting fish against the Rockies at mile high. And while we have a moment, all of us here at Sports Channel would like to welcome our affiliate, Prime Cable, and all our viewers in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Chicago yes. yes. Get a all whole your money. Whole bunch of my money in Chicago. Can't beat anybody. One and two to Ramirez. Well. Too many sandbaggers. You just can't get anybody to pay you in Chicago. <laughs> Especially the guy sitting in my right. <laughs> uh oh, Ooh, got oh, a, got away with a hanger right there. A young man can hit those pitches a long way. Yeah, especially when he's way behind his fastball. This is right into his swing right now, Ramirez. Oh, that is wheelhouse, and he was right on it too. Murray at first, nobody out. No score. Second inning. Jammed in fastball. Darren Jackson, can of corn. Nice pitch by Alex. First baseman, number 11, Paul Sermonto. Comes right back inside on the hands. He does not allow Ramirez to get his arms extended out over the plate, which is the key to pitching to this Indian ball club. So a nice pitch, one out. Here's the first baseman, Paul Sorrento, hitting a 275, 12 homers. He's knocked in 54. Three for 10 in this series, two homers, three RBIs, takes the ball outside. Paul in his last 47 games, hitting a 303. Good fastball. One and one to count. Eddie Murray's not afraid to steal a base. Seven for nine. You got to watch him. Yeah, if you go to sleep on him. He'll take off. That's inside two and one to count. A couple of partials in the American League. Bottom of the first inning. Boston leading Seattle three to one. Still hitting. Top of the second at Tiger Stadium. Kansas City leading Detroit one to nothing. Murray stretches that lead out just a little bit further. 
As the count goes to three and one. Four sellouts here in Cleveland. Drive averaging 38,838 per game. Full count. Young Alex 2 0 this year against the tribe. 3 and 2 lifetime. There goes Murray. And Sorrento just does get a piece of it. See, Alex at home. Wow. Seven and one with a one nine nine earned run average and on the road. Two and six with a five nine eight. Going to rise to the challenge this afternoon. Hey, that last ball game he pitched against Cleveland. I've mentioned he's 2 and 0 this year, but he went nine, seven innings, seven hits, three, three runs, one walk, 12 strikeouts. So he just dominated them after a very tough beginning. First two innings, he looked like they might get to him, but Alex rebounded and pitched very well after that. Well, Serena was set, and Alex. With a full count. That's outside the park. Good to see. It's been a long time for these Cleveland Indian fans. Two guys after my own heart over there. Yeah, out there in those free <laughs> seats. Now Levire and Alex having trouble with nobody on second base. But they're going through some multiples. Now we're all set. And the payoff pitch. Change up. Strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. That'll do it. Nothing across. There were no hits. There was an error. Nobody left. And after two, no score. And by Dodge Neon. Come meet Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year and the nice Dodge dealers who sell it. Michael Vallier, as you can see, has now thrown out eight of 36 base dealers on the season. And it was a strike him out throw about Eddie Murray in motion right there, hoping that Paul Sorrento will put it in play or walk. Good changeup by Alex and Lavalier. Good throw down to second base. Watch. Sorrento way out in front. He opens up that front hip early. He's looking dead red. And Alex fooled him with a great changeup. So that gets out the socks out of that inning as we go to the third. Warren Newsom to lead things off. Deacon swings and hits it hard right up the middle. Boy, to the left of Vizcal, he had no chance to move. Just a rocket on the first pitch fastball. So the Sox get their first hit of the afternoon. Nagy had retired six in a row with three punch outs and he had been dealing. Watch it right there. The fastball. It's about thigh high over, over the middle of the plate. And he gave it. A licking right there. So that'll bring up Spanky. Lavalier hitting at 311 with no homers and 17 RBIs. Spanky in his last four starts. Four for 15 with six runs batted in. 
Fastball strike at the knees. Nagy, as we showed you in his pitching profile, a number of pitches to go with. Fastball somewhere between 87 and 90. He's got it up there at 90 right now, I guarantee you. Curve change, slider, and a splitter. Mainly the curve and slider has been the pitches that he's used with his fastball so far in just over two innings of work this afternoon. Ooh, good look. Wow, snap throw to first. Newsom back. Boy, Nagy's got a good breaking ball this afternoon. Real sharp. Sox hitters have not picked it up. And he's been at the knees on the corners. So the volume down in the count 0 and 2. Fastball hit the left field. Albert Bell right there to make the catch. They gave him a good pitch to hit right there on 0 and 2. Line drive off the bat of Lavalier, but Albert Bell playing him in that direction. And the scouting report works again. And that'll bring up Ozzie Guillen. Ozzie hitting at 269, a homer and 33 driven in. Five for 11 in this series with three runs scored. Ozzy just three for 14 against Nagy in his career. Breaking ball strike. I think what the Sox are going to have to start doing here is trying to get in and out of there pretty quick with Nagy. He gets a couple. He's throwing strike one. So he gets a strike on you. He can start nibbling for those corners and that will make him doubly tough steps off and as the hawker would say you got to get those good pitchers early in the game and early in the count if you hey. don't they're going to get you yeah Pena setting up outside right there. He hit his target, and Ozzie just nudges it off the end of the bat. So 0-2 on Gann. Yeah, they're going to get you, all right. Nagy, now 27 years old, from Fairfield, Connecticut. Six foot three, 200 pounder. In his fourth year in the major leagues. There's a fastball up and away. One and two. Well, a breaking ball for Charles Nagy on the first pitch, getting it over and grabbing a strike with a breaking ball really makes it tough on Sox hitters. If he is not getting the breaking ball over and he's going one and oh, then at that point, you as a hitter can maximize his fastball in your own mind. But when he's getting a hook over that slider, whew, you got your work cut out for you. It looks like a splitter yeah. right there. Fouled at home plate. Good one, too. Another dimension. Oh, boy. Yeah, put that in the back of your mind now. <laughs> <laughs> Something that looks like a fastball is just going to drop off the table. Watch this one. There it is, a splitter. Whew. Terrific location, too. That was a strike. So Nagy showing us all five of his pitches. This is way outside that time. Two and two on Ozzy. Sox open up a four game series with the Royals at Kauffman Stadium. Tomorrow evening. Two two breaking ball ripped the left field Newsom in motion and he'll have to hold up at second base as Ozzy gets himself a solid single to left. 
Well, it would certainly would behoove the Sox to put an aggressive attitude on. And Gene Lamont thinking the same thing right there. Started Newsom. Beautiful little hit and run. Right out of the vacated spot, Vizquel was going over to cover. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was another splitter. Of course, Ozzy is the best split finger fastball hitter that we have seen in the world. Yeah. So Joey Cora, the hitter, Joey had a chance to do some damage right here. He popped up a bunt attempt in the first inning. Slashes that one foul. And our next televised game on Sports Channel will be Tuesday night at 7. White Sox against the Kansas City Royals. And Wilson Alvarez will go against Tom Flash Gordon. Wilson 11 and 5 with a 3 4 earned run average, and Flash 9 and 6 with a 4 7 4. Tomorrow night's game will be on Channel 7. There's a fastball down low. Joey, 309 with runners in scoring position. That's good. How about the matchup tomorrow night, Hawk? Jack, Black Jack McDowell against Kevin Apier. Ooh. 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 Fun game to watch. Hits to Joey. Breaking ball popped up, but that's foul. And Guy loses everything he had in his hands trying to get that ball. And here's the remainder of the matchups. McDowell, Apier, Alvarez, Gordon, first two games. And then Jason Bray against Mark Gubiza. Scott Ruffcorn against David Cohn. Ooh, Gordy. I'll tell you what. That David Cohn, what did he punch out 12 yesterday at Tiger Stadium? Didn't he? He looked unhittable. I just saw the highlights. Man. Fastball, pulled foul. Right side, so Joey hanging in there, one and two. Runners at first and second. One out here in the third inning as you look at Tim Raines, who's on deck. Sox with two hits, the Indians with one. What was that Jim Tomey double? Two outs in the first inning. That's certainly the hardest hit ball of this game. That might be the hardest hit ball of this whole series. You know, I'm just thinking about that. And there has been a lot of thunder. Cleveland scoring 25 runs in the first three games. Joey pops this one up to left field. Albert Bell there makes the catch, and there's two gone. Left fielder number 30, Tim Raines. So with two down runners at first and second, Tim Raines will hit. Timmy hit the ball hard his first time up right at the second baseman, Alvaro Espinosa. Frank Thomas on deck. As the Sox trying to get on the board first. Trying to reestablish that momentum that they had Thursday when they won that ball game. Six to five for Wilson Alvarez. Fastball strike right there on the inside corner. He painted him right there at that belt. See Timmy with runners on, a much better hitter at 299. Well, if he stays right there on Rock, Tim's in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, if Timmy wants it, unless he wants to look for it in there. Yeah, he's going to hit it foul. Oh, boy. Now he goes away on the outside corner. Well, there's a wide plate once again from the fastball inside corner, which was a good pitch. Then all of a sudden, the Turns that and over, catches the outside corner. So he's utilizing the whole plate, Nagy. He can throw out. strikes inside, in, outside, out, not mess around with the middle of the plate. That's good. Yeah, for you. Comes inside, just misses this one. But Timmy's diving out there to try and cover that outside corner. The reason I'm saying that he would, by looking for it, he'd be having to go right at the pitcher instead of his old upper body leaning out over the plate. Well, you're right. You know, if he were to be looking in there and bail a little bit, he could possibly keep it fair then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're diving across and you get that inside fastball, you hit it hard. I mean, that's 30 rows. Wow. 
Well, that's what Timmy, he'll do that occasionally. Look for that fastball in there, go right at the pitcher, and man, he'll smoke it. Seen him hit some home runs that way this year. Two two coming up from Nagy to Reigns. Slider fish ain't biting. Three and two. Runners will be in motion. So the plot thickening here. Newsom and Gian with singles in this inning. And guess what? We're gonna have another meeting at the mound. Mike Hargrove, the skipper on the left, Bill Reagan, the vulture, the pitching coach. And Joe Nosick on the left and the skipper, Gene Lamont. Black Sunday here in Cleveland, the White Sox with their black uniform tops. Trying to get things going, Sox losing two straight to the Tribe. That was after a sweep of the Tigers. Runners going. Base hit to right field. He hit it hard. Newsom's going to score easily. Ozzie Gein in the third. The Sox get on the board first. One nothing. Hello. Jim Angio's pick to click. Pena wanted the ball inside. He got it out over the plate. The movement took it right out there. And that enabled Rock to just scorch it. Ball was scalded. They threw it right in his wheelhouse. Where his wheelhouse is, which is outer half of the plate. So a nice job of hitting there by Reigns. Runner still at the corner. Sox lead it one nothing. And here's the big hurt. Sinking fastball. This is way inside. Here's Sox, 40% of the runs have been scored with two outs this year. Whew. That's awesome. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, curveball right there. Pretty good pitch to hit. Well, the first pitch to Frank in the first inning, fastball, high neck in. Then he went away with another fastball, caught the corner, finally got him on a good slider. Starts him off right there inside with a pitch. Comes back with another slider. So he's trying to go in and away. Good concept. Yeah, he's away right here. Fastball paints the outside. Jim Raines with that RBI now has 48 on the season. And Frank Thomas got a battle on his hands right here. One and two coming up. They're coming inside. This is down low. And we'll see an interesting choice of pitches right here. We'll see what they want to do. I would think the best pitch he could come back with now you like the breaking ball, I like the fastball. Speaking from Nagy's standpoint, on the outside part of the plate. Well, that same breaking ball they threw him last time was probably what would, would be the one. He, they're coming away again. Fastball, that one misses. Guess you can't hit that spot every time, huh? Well, if you could, you couldn't spend the money. <laughs> this thing, Whippy, if you'd have had that kind of control, just think about all the money that you would have had. Ooh. Didn't that hurt you? No. <laughs> Never worry about the money I didn't have. <laughs> and I never will have. Here's a 3 2 to Frank. Runner from first goes and he walks him. So Nagy, after getting ahead in the count, walks Big Frank. 97th base on balls for Thomas. So Julio Franco's got a chance to really do some damage right here. Oh, Lordy. Juice grounded out his first time up. But Franco has done some damage against Nagy in the past. Five for 12. The thing I don't like about that ground out is he grounded it to third. When Julio's pulling the ball like that, 
he's generally not swinging it real well. His best asset, he's pulling the ball hard. It's up the middle. That's pulling for him. Fastball right there. Ooh. May have been the best pitch he'll get. He was taken all the way. He likes it this situation. Seven for 17, 17 RBIs with the bases loaded. That's down low, one and one. We're in the third inning here at Jacobs Field. As you look at the three Sox runners, Ozzie's the runner at third, Tim Raines at second, and Big Frank, the runner at first. Franco the hitter with two out. Line shot right center field. That'll gap him. Two runs will score. Thomas in the third. And Franco, a clutch. Two out, two runs, single. Sox lead it 3 nothing. And once again, three two-out runs. Third baseman number 23, Robin Ventura. Well, he got that one up. That's supposed to be a sinking fastball. Look where it is. It winds up about letter high. He got his hands up above the ball in that classic inside-out swing of Franco. Hands before the barrel of the bat. Just rips it into right center. That is vintage juice. Don't stop now, 23. Robin Ventura struck out his first time up. Went down swinging. Takes a fastball outside. So Nagy he started to miss with some of his pitches. Boy, he looked unhittable for two innings. Julio now with 85 driven in on the season. Robin the bunt. Fouled at home plate. And some of you folks might be wondering why Robin would be bunting with two out. Well, this is a good situation, actually. He gets it down. That runner from third will score, get himself a hit and an RBI. And another run for the good guys. Runner from third's got to be heads up, though. Hit hard right at the second baseman, Espinoza. Throws him out. That'll do it for the Sox. Put three on the board. And after two and a half, lead it. Three zip. Alex Fernandez has been staked to a 3 0 lead. Here in the bottom of the third inning. Two out RBIs. Jim Raines with a single. Julio Franco with a two run single. And the Sox lead it 3 nothing against Charles Nagy. So. After two very easy innings. The bottom of the order got to Nagy in the third. Alex will face the 8-9-1 hitters for Cleveland here in the third inning. Tony Pena, Alvaro Espinosa, and Kenny Lofton. Get Lofton up there with two out, nobody on. Pena, curveball strike right there. And Tony coming alive, 318 with one homer, 17, seven driven in, backing up Sandy Alomar this year. And last year, he looked like he was almost helpless at the plate. He would knock the bat out of his hand. And look what he's done against the Sox. Eight for 16. Hitting at a cool 500. He has hit in 16 of his last 19 ball games. 365 clip. Six doubles, a home run, and five runs batted in. So he's done a pretty good job for these people. Fastball hit in the air right center. Darren Jackson back to the warning track. Boy, boy, that ball carries out to right field here. Lordy. One out. Second boy, Hawker Room. You probably would have, what, have hit about 80 home runs here playing every day. <laughs> Here's Alvaro Espinoza. 
Hitting at 260, 101 homer, 18 driven in. Two for four with two runs scored yesterday in that victory over the Sox. Pops this one up. Shallow right field. The Deacon will take care of that one. And there's two gone. And let's check out this afternoon's Southwest Airlines Plain Smart Trivia Troll. What infamous baseball controversy occurred on this date in 1983? Ha. Uh, easy. July 24th, 1983, when the Sox won 99 ball games that year, winning the divisional championship by 20. I still remember. Tito Landrum from 1983. If you ask about anything yeah. in 83, it's Tito Landrum. Rick Barn. That ball going in the upper deck. Wow. Man. Broke my heart. Yeah, that broke a lot of hearts. But unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. No. Kenny Lofton, curveball strike. Out of way, Alex. Now you chunking. Do you know the answer? Maybe the uh, pine tar? George Brett, yeah. Pine Tar incident. You are correct, sir. Yeah, McClellan. Sitting right over there first base. That's right. He's the guy. Who'd he hit it off of? Who'd he hit the homer off of? Is that El Seducifer? Yes, it was. At Yankee Stadium? Yeah. Upper tank. No, actually, that wasn't upper tank. They showed the highlight of that earlier in the game. It was lower deck. The, the other one, I think, was in the playoffs that he hit off Goose. That's right. the upper deck. Remember that one? Oh. Killed it. There's a drive to right center field. Darren Jackson. Can he get there? No, it's off the fence and watch this guy run. Uh oh. Better get it in there quickly. Don't miss the cutoff, man. Joey Cora has it. And he's going to run it in there. That's an automatic triple when he hits it there. I thought he had a chance for four bags. I think Alex made a bad pitch with a change up there upstairs ahead. That's exactly what it was. So you're not going to fool off there. See that stride? He just picked that right foot up and put it down. Right there when the ball bounced away from Darren, I thought he had a good shot of inside the Parker, but he made a nice play, nice pick up, and very quickly got it in. Tell you what, if he doesn't make that swipe with his glove right there and come up with it, he would have scored easily. So here's Vizcal after the triple. Bunts that one foul. Indians have two hits off Alex, and they were both hit a ton. Double by Tomey and triple by Lofton. But no runs on the board yet. Jim Tomey is the on-deck hitter. Ground to the shortstop. Ozzy charges. Makes the off balance throw, and that'll do it. Cleveland threatens again. They come up empty after three from Jacobs Field. Sox lead at 3 nothing. We'll start in the American League. one nothing. Kansas City leading Detroit in the third. Seattle, Boston. Roger Clemens on the mound for the Bo Sox. Sox scored three in the first including a two-run homer by John Valentin. Toronto Blue Jays aiming for their eighth straight win. They are 5-0 and this year at home against Texas. And the Yankees looking to go 10-1 and on this present 11-game road trip. In the National League, Reds and Cubs at Wrigley. Cubs losers yesterday in 13 innings. San Francisco gets RBIs early from Daryl Strawberry and Barry Bonds. Tonight, the Braves and Cards close their six-game series. Tom Glavin pitching on just three days rest. Back out to Cleveland, Hawk and do guys thank you spike and there you see the good news here from jacobs field the Sox got on the board early against charles Nagy, and that was big trying to reestablish the momentum that they had in game one on thursday night Nagy has thrown 53 pitches but look at the total wow 33 pitches in the third inning after going 9 and 11 respectively so Sox made him work here's dj he pops up the first hanging breaking ball in the right field, Ramirez calls. Quickly, one gone. So, you want to see the trivia trove? Right Questions and answers. Southwest Airlines, plain smart. Trivia trove. What infamous baseball controversy occurred on this date, 1983? The Blight Tower incident involving Georgie at 
Yankee Stadium. Incidentally, he did get his home run back. Well, they have to go back and replay that game, didn't they, Hawk? Huh? Yeah, I think so. So Georgie was not denied. And now you can put Pine Tar as high up on that bat as you want. Breaking ball strike. One and one on Deacon. Warren Newsom started it all off last inning with a solid single to left center. He scored the first run of this ball game on the two out base hit by Tim Raines. It's this one hard, but right at Espinosa. Tricky hop, but he handles it nicely. Two down. The catcher, number 10, and following the White Sox game against Seattle on Saturday, July 30th, Chrysler Plymouth will present a fantastic fireworks show. Game time, 6.05, and tickets may be purchased by calling 312-831-1 Sox. Here's Michael Lavalier in line to left field his first time up. Fastball misses away. Getting a little cloudy here at the Jake on the lake. Fastball up high, 2 0. The azure blue skies over Jacob Field. What kind of clouds are those, Duke? Cumulus. With the flag wafting in the breeze. <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. Doesn't get any better than this, does it? Well, that's the biggest flag in the world. Fastball strike. I like to roll that thing up. Man, we play green game. smaller than that. <laughs> yeah. The volume line shot, but guess who's there? Kenny Lofton makes the catch in right center. And that'll do it. A one, two, three inning for Nagy after three and a half. Sox lead it three nothing. And now it's that time of the afternoon where we are so proud to present our Sherwin-Williams batting leaders. In the American League, the big hurt, Frank Thomas. One point of Paul O'Neill of the Yankees. Kenny Lofton and Albert Bow. Wow, you got three of the top four hitters in American League in this ball game this afternoon. That's big. And in the senior circuit, what new? Tony Gwynn, 393. Jeff Bagwell at 359. Hal Morris and Moises Alou round out the top four there. Those are the best hitters in baseball. Those guys can hit. They got some polos over there. And as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, Alex Fernandez has a two-hit shutout. Alex, no walks. He has punched out one. A little behind schedule with those strikeouts. But that's all right. Just get him to hit him at him. Last time he faced the Tribe, he shut it. Well, he shut him down. 12 strikeouts in nine innings. A complete game victory for Alex. Slider misses in. Jim Tomey got a 2-0 fastball out over the plate, and he just ripped it. Off that screen in front of the Cleveland bullpen. There's a fastball strike. There it is. Right in that screen is where he ripped that line drive. Fortunately, he didn't get enough altitude. Surprised didn't go through the screen. Talk mentioned that may be the hardest hit ball of this series. See, eight homers this month. He fouls that one back. Is a little tardy. In the last 12 games, eight homers. Yeah. Tommy, 23 years old, from Peoria, Illinois. Home of my favorite comedian of all time, Royce Elliott. Oh, I've stolen a few from him. <laughs> He's funny, man. From him? And, well, anybody else I hear though, says something funny. Pitch misses outside. Two and two. Alex getting it and throwing it this afternoon. Well, he's got that good look about him. Fastball. He top hands that one in the right field. Tommy 
Lead off single for the Tribe. Man, when he's got his timing mechanism right, he just scalds the ball. Bullet by Joey Cora in the right field. So the Indians get their third place hitter on base. And that'll bring up Albert Bell. Alex started Albert off with an inside fastball for a jam shot foul ball. Then he went away with the heater and got him to hit it off the end of the bat. Almost that pitch right there. Did he go? Yes, sir. Big break right there. Sure he went. Glad he didn't hit it. See Albert, fourth in average, third in homers, and first in RBIs with 90. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh Lordy. Don't throw him another one like that. No. Breaking ball. We have seen Albert murder that pitch right in the middle of the plate. They may have been just a tad quick on that one, but he's down the count 0 and 2. Albert will stand on that back line, but right on top of the plate. Open stance. Has his hands very low. A little ding toed right there. Hands very much forward, and then he cocks them up and back. As he really does a good job of clearing that front side. At the Jake. 46 games. 59 RBIs, 21 homers. Lordy. 423 batting average. Jeez. Like sitting here. Did he? Yes, he did. That's a number 33, Eddie Murray. Yeah, he did. But that second look really showed it that Albert went after it. Two strikeouts, a big one right there to get Albert Bell. So he actually got himself out there. Two swings at bad pitches. Eddie Murray is tardy. Hits that one. Still a long way foul left side. Eddie reached base on an error by Robin Ventura. In the second inning, no damage though as Alex pitched around that. Told me the runner at first. He's two for two. Fastball up and away. Eddie Murray now 38 years old from Los Angeles. Struggling this month as you can see with a 190 batting average. Murray now 0 for 8 against Alex in his career. Ooh, change up got him. Oh, that pitch was up. But he got Murray way out in that front foot. He gives him a real good motion. He can come right back with another one. Good motion right there by Alex. Good arm action. Here's the one two. Fastball misses way up and away. Fastball. He throws that right by him downstairs. So Murray goes down. Hey, when you catch Eddie Murray in a funk like he's in right now, you can get him out a lot of different ways. When he's hot, he'll hit everything. Fastball right there downstairs, outer half of the plate. And Alex throws it right by him. So a couple of big strikeouts for Fernandez, and that'll bring up Manny Ramirez. Manny hitting at 252 now. He 
tries to pull that outside pitch. Foul. Wide to center his first time up. Forty one thousand eight hundred ninety four here in attendance. And that is the largest crowd of the season. Largest sellout. Almost one hundred and sixty eight thousand for these four games. Wow. Ka -chink, ka -chink. Ka -chink. Thank you very much. That's lovely music to my ears. There's the standing room only seats. Uh, Ramirez slider. One and two. Drops down, lines that one foul. So Tommy goes back to first base. The Jake, their attendance, home dates 47, 41,884 today. I thought the guy said 94, but season total of a million eight two eight. 419. That's good. Fast. Oh boy, he made a perfect pitch right there. Ramirez just stuck his bat out at the last second. The picture perfect pitch. And he was going to be a punch out right there. But no, he gets new life. One and two coming up to Ramirez. Ramirez, 1993 minor league player of the year. He put up some great numbers. He was born in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Now lives in Washington Heights, New York. There's a ground ball. Good that's stop right. by Alex. That's excellent. Alex turned himself into an infield and makes a good play to get out of the inning. Indians come up empty once again after four. Sox lead it 3 nothing. And a reminder coming away on the Sports Channel Report. Tonight it'll be the White Sox recap. We'll take a look at game four of this pivotal series against the Tribe. Women's U.S. Open highlights from the LPGA Major in Michigan from Indian Wood Golf Club and news and notes all around Major League Baseball. That's coming away on the Sports Channel Report tonight. Right here at the top of the fifth inning, three nothing good guys. Ozzie to lead it off against the right-hander Charles Nagy. Slaps that one hard over into the Tribe dugout. Charlie Manuel is standing right over there in the line of fire. He yelled at Ozzy and he moved to another spot. The grinder. Ozzy, one for one, a single back in the third inning. And he scored. Watch out. Nagy has retired the side in order. Three of the four innings he has worked. The one inning he didn't, he gave up three. Stuff happens. The 0 2 pitch. Little chopper. The skill. Over the top. He's smooth. And a reminder on Sunday, July 31st, all kids ages 14 and under attending the Sox game against the Seattle Mariners at 135 will receive a Waldo the White Sox Wolf Kids cap courtesy of all the good folks at Coca Cola. So for tickets, just dial 312 831 1 Sox. Billy O'Rourke, Marvin Herb, and all the good folks at Coca-Cola. Joey Cora takes the strike. Joey 0 for 2. He's tried to, but that was back in the first inning, popped up to Sereno, and he flied to left field. Tommy and on the grass, outfield, swung well around to the left. There's a ground ball, hits the mound, kicks over towards Espinoza, tucks it up, throws him out, two down. Slight drizzle falling here at Jacobs Field. Left fielder number 30, Tim Green. 
So two out, and here comes Tim Raines. Yeah, the great food punters enjoying some of that wonderful Levy Brothers food. Mm. Outstanding. Just want to find out how much weight I've gained in the last four days. Scrumptious. <laughs> it's good. Curveball strike to Rock. Owen won the count. Charles Nagy making his 20th start of the season, his third against the Sox. 0-2 this year. Four and six lifetime. Bill Albert Bell is there, makes a catch, and it'll do it. So for the fourth time in fifth inning, five innings, I should say, for Nagy, one, two, three, halfway home, three nothing socks. Sports Channel, there when it counts. All right now, let's check out our game summary brought to you by all the greater Chicago and Dodge dealers. Three nothing good guys, four hits, three runs for the tribe. And all three of those runs coming with two out in the top of the third inning. And that's our game summary by the Dodge Dealers. As Paul Sorrento will lead it off. It'll be the lower third of the tribe border. Sorrento, Pena, and Espinosa. Alex with three strikeouts. Sorrento was one of them. Nice pitch inside, just off the plate, and the count evens at one. Pull the string on that pitch, missed. Two balls in the strike. Twenty-four-year-old right-hander Alex Fernandez pitching to the twenty-eight-year-old. First baseman out of Somerville, Massachusetts. There's a fastball strike outside corner. Two and two. Hit hard, Ozzy. Right off the edge of his glove. Good effort by Ozzy. He just couldn't get there quick enough. Scald. So far, the second inning in a row. Indians have their leadoff man aboard, and here's a catcher, Pena. He flies deep to right center field his first trip. There's a base hit in the right field. So on his way to third. Diggins got a shot at him. Now bad throw, real bad. As Pena moves into second base. And they're going to allow Sereno to take home. Rocky Rowe comes out. And Pena in the third. No. Oh, that was a terrible throw by Warren Newsom. I don't think he thought Paul Sorrento was going to try to go to third. He did not charge it real good. Came in a little bit nonchalant. Now all of a sudden picks it up. Now sees he's going to go. Turns it loose. That's over everything. So now they are having a conference between McClellan, Rowe, Cheetah.
What they're talking about is where that ball hit. Well, they go over the ground rules prior to the game. And if that ball hit that screen in front of the photographer as well, or uh, one of the posts thereof, So we'll see how they're going to rule it as Lamont standing out there by himself now as the umpires depart. They're going to allow Serrano to score and Peña at second. This is a 3 1 ball game. Lamont loses the argument, and here's Espinoza. Error on Newsom. Thing, but you can see if that would have hit the cameraman or something, it would probably he would have reacted some way. That would definitely hit the post. Yeah, it appeared the ball still should have been in play, and Serrano should have been a third. You get three umpires in the vicinity. I went to the count. To Espinoza. Slaps that one foul. Three runs, four hits, two errors for the Sox. One run, five hits, and no errors for Cleveland. Espinoza, just a 224 hitter with runners in scoring position right here. He's trying to get that guy to third for the next hitter. He's going to get the job done. One out. We're paying in the third. Well, he was going the opposite way that entire at bat. Good job of team hitting right there by Espinoza. Well, Kenny Lofton's going to get a chance here with a runner at third and just one out. Maybe I'll tell you our outfield defensive play the last. 10 days or so has not been too good. No. And when you don't have Lance Johnson out there to anchor it, it makes it that much more difficult. Boy, I tell you, when you, especially when you're watching Kenny Lofton on the other side. Well, as I said, I just don't think Warren anticipated Sorrento trying to go to third base right there. He just came in very nonchalantly. Then all of a sudden hurried it, so he's compounding a mistake that shouldn't have been made in the first place. So the corner's in close. Alfield swung around to the left. Here's Lofton. That's in the left field. Reigns. Underneath it, Pena. Here's the throw. Off the money, he scores. So it's a 3 2 ball game. Yeah, there's a good chance to throw somebody out right here. Tim Rangers just doesn't have a strong enough arm. Fastball, good pitch by Alex. He's way behind. Timmy comes out and does the best he can with what he has. And it's just not good enough to get the slow-running Tony Pena. Of course, the third base side. 
That ball's on the third base side. They do have a shot at him. It would have been very close. Here's Vizquel. Grounded to second and grounded to short. It'd be very interesting to see what the umpires had to say about that throw by Newsom. Entirely different scenario with Espinosa. Oh yeah, there's runners at first and third. Yeah. Three and over count. Jim, tell me on deck. Well, Pena went to second on the overthrow as soon as he saw yeah. the ball leave his thing, his hand. First walk issued by Alex. Certainly didn't want to do that, especially with the guy who's swinging the bat and looks the most dangerous this afternoon for the tribe. Tim Tomey coming up. He has hung out two rockets, two ropes. Double and a single. Now field deep, swung around to the right. They call a ball. So now the tying run in scoring position. Move that shoulder. No question about that. Breaking ball high, says Rope. That's a hard, long strike. A very hard, very long strike. One and one to count. Looks like Tommy feels pretty good about himself at home plate right now. He's got Alex fastball locked in. So if that's the case, you can still throw the fastball, but you better show him something else in a different location, and it better be inside as air is popped up left left side Ozzy Ventura now Ozzy and Ventura makes the catch and it'll retire the side but now before the tribe comes back with two runs on two hits a very big error right there one left and after five socks by one top of the sixth inning Sox lead it three to two and a reminder our next game on Sports Channel will be Tuesday second of that four game set from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City when Wilson Alvarez will tee it up against Flash Gordon. That's Tuesday at 7 right here on Sports Channel. Big Frank Thomas will lead it off. He'll be followed by Franco and Ventura to face Charles Nagy. Breaking ball strike. Frank has struck out, walked, picked up his 97th base on balls. One and one to count. Toronto going after their eighth straight victory, shutting out Texas three nothing. Top of the fourth at Skydome. Here's the breaking ball strike. One and two to count. Minnesota leading Milwaukee three to one. Bottom of the second at County Stadium. 
Five two Kansas City over the Tigers bottom of the fifth in Detroit. And Boston leading Seattle five to two top of the fifth at Fenway. Two and two. Looks like Frank is really having a tough time picking up Nagy. Not being able to di differentiate between the fastball and the breaking ball right here. Look at this. He thinks it's fastball. You see that front hip open wide up early. Ball gets away from Pena. Bounces back to him. Frank on his way to first base. And they get him. So one out. I don't know if that ball was moving so much away from Frank Thomas. You see, great pick there by Sorrento. My goodness. Here's Franco, one for two, a big two run single in the third. Breaking ball strike. Three runs, four hits, two errors for the Sox, two runs, five hits, no errors for Cleveland. That's low. Some action over in the National League. Montreal leading the Dodgers four to one, top of the fourth with the big O. Top of the sixth at Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia two. San Diego nothing. That's out of play. Bottom of the fourth at Shea Stadium. Giants shutting out the Mets. Three zip. Top of the third at Wrigley. No scores. Reds and Cubs. And they're just getting underway at Houston. Pirates against the Astros. Deep in the right field. Way back, Ramirez looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Line drive, solo homer by Franco, and the Sox lead it four to two. Number 17, Folio. On a one two pitch. We talk about Franco. When he's going best, it's when he's hitting the ball to the right side of second base, the right side of the field. And this is just patented right here. Leaving the ballpark, fastball didn't get down, stayed upstairs. That's almost the same pitch he drove for that two run single. Big hit right there. Gives the Sox a little bit of insurance. Ventura out in front, hits it on the ground. Espinoza's up with it. Over to Sereno, and it's out number two. So Franco now with 17 homers, he's knocked in 86. Just four off the league lead of Albert Bell's 90. Here's a happy camper for you. Dr. Herm Schneider. Here's Darren Jackson. Darren struck out. Off to right. Can't get it. He's now one for 14 lifetime against Nagy. One one to count to DJ. Two and one. Interesting looking at Frank Thomas's numbers against Nagy. Nine for 23 coming into this ball game, but this afternoon it just doesn't look like he's picking up the pitch from him. Now field bunch there straight up. There's a shot base hit on a breaking pitch. So a two out single by Jackson. Well, he hung that one. Right fielder number 24, Warren Newsom. 
And that'll bring up Warren Newsom. He's one for two, a single and a run scored. Coming back in the third. He joined us late. Sox with three in the third. Indians with two in the fifth. Sox with one here in the top of the sixth. Curveball low. That breaking pitch down. The ball on the strike, two out to Warren Newsom. Oops. Lighting the protector. I got splitter misses. So News in a good shape at two balls in the strike. Light him up, Deacon. Jammed him with a breaking pitch. Espinoza, Sereno, and that'll do it. But the Sox put another one on the board. Julio Franco's 17th homer. And after five and a half, they lead it four to two. Cleveland came back with two in the bottom of the fifth inning and looked like they were trying to reestablish some momentum. But then the juice went to work. Hit a fastball. I think it was supposed to be a sinker from Nagy. Got it up about belt high and he ripped it into the right field seats. So Franco has driven in three of the four White Sox runs this afternoon. So Alex Fernandez has an insurance run to work with. You see it. Well, what we can see from our booth it is clear blue sky, but behind us, it's no look too good right there. And there's the line of blue coming into your screen right now. They'll be playing YMCA here in a little while. Wow. New Gateway Center across the street will house the Cleveland Cavaliers. Meanwhile, here's Albert Bell. Lead things off for the Tribe here in the sixth. First pitch fastball misses low and away. Albert grounded the short and struck out swinging in his two plate appearances this afternoon. Bell now four for 22 against Alex Fernandez in his career with a homer. Good pitch. Fastball right on the outside corner. He aced him. Big ball game here this afternoon. It's either going to be a tie or a two-one, two-game White Sox lead in the race in the AL Central. Alex tries to dot that outside corner again and misses low and away. There you see it. Sox have played two more games in the Tribe, have two more victories, but a loss here this afternoon would put Cleveland percentage points ahead of the Sox in the AL Central. Both teams going on the road. Yes, sir, right there. Whew. That's tough. Cleveland goes to Baltimore. The Orioles are always tough, and the Sox will head to Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, a big four-game series. And it's not going to be easy there. The Sox are just five and six on the artificial surfaces this season. Ooh, got a pitch on the inner half, but he couldn't handle it. Fouls it at home plate. Two and two on Albert Bell, who leads the league with those 90 runs batted in. Franco 
with those three this afternoon as 86. Well, Cleveland, Cleveland has a day-night doubleheader in Baltimore. Strike on the outside corner. Oh, did he ace him. Picture perfect pitch by Alex Fernandez. And Albert Bell goes down for the second time. Strikeout number four for Alex Fernandez. Take a look. Bang, you're dead. Uh-oh. Kept his hands back that time, but the pitch was right on the corner at the knees. So one down for Eddie Murray. Eddie 0 for 2, a strikeout his last time up, takes the curveball inside. They have four games with the Orioles in three days at Camden Yards, so they can either make up some ground or lose some quickly. There's a shot, one hopper by Franco. Short hopped him. Julio didn't get his skirt down, and the ball goes through. The ball was not scalded, although Eddie Murphy, Murray, big and strong. See, that's one of those, those hops that just jumps out at you. Top spin right there. So Julio elected to backpedal, didn't work. I guess they're going to score that in error. Three up on the board for the Sox. Base hit. The runner at first base for Manny Ramirez. There's a curveball strike on the outside corner. Well, he's tired. He fouls it off to the right. No, that is scored a base hit. For Eddie Murray. Hit total even now at two, at six. Sox have made two errors. One by Ventura, one by Newsom. Alex with an 0-2 pitch coming up to the rookie right fielder, Manny Ramirez. Fastball up high. Sox deep and straight away in the outfield for the youngster. Heater, he's tardy. Fouled away into the lower deck. Paul Sorrento on deck. He's always dangerous. Yeah, this Cleveland lineup is no slouches, that's for sure, especially with Carlos Baerga, who is out, has been out for the entire series. Baerga is currently day-to-day -day with a severely sprained right ankle. Slider misses. Two and two. There's Carlos. He doesn't look like he's fit for action. Well, he smokes this one. Good foul. Well, he turned on that high heater and just ripped it. Foul down the left field line. Watch the swing. Watch him get the head of the bat out. Man, that's a very powerful swing there. By Ramirez with just a long strike. Two two pitch coming up once again. Sox with that infield and double play depth. Drop down, got him. Punches him out on a fastball. 
Sure, Alex would like that location out over the plate. He got it inside, but still First enough to get it by the rookie right fielder. Ball tails in a bit. Late movement there. And Ramirez just does miss it. So with two gone, Sorrento the hitter. Paul Singleton scored in the fifth inning. One for two today, hitting at 277. Has five home runs in his last five ball games, so he is always a threat. Sox clinging to that four to two advantage. Fastball strike on the outside corner. Misses right there. One and one on Sorrento. Alex has thrown 96 pitches, 66 strikes, 30 balls. Good pitch at the knees outside corner. Alex has made quality pitches with that fastball. Right there. Eddie Murray bluffed like he was feeling second base. We're going to try to, and Alex, quick throw over. Where were these scorekeepers when we were playing, Duke? <laughs> Man. I do not know. Oh man, good pitch, didn't get it. Tried to dot that outside corner. Very, very close. Oh man, that's close. Breaking ball, scalded, knocked down by Franco. Alex, can he get there? Yes, he does. Good play by Julio. And that'll retire the side. Cleveland strands a runner after six from Jacobs Field. Sox lead it 4-2. And next up on our Cooperno on deck for the Sox, the bottom third of Lavalier, Guillen, and Cora. Sports Channel, tail of the tape, top of the seventh inning. Sox by two. And for the good guys, it'll be Lavalier, Ozzy, then the top of the order, Joy Cora to face Charles Nagy. Lavalier is fly to left, and he's lined to center. Fastball high off the plate. Final game of the year between these two clubs. Sox trying to take a 7-5 season series edge. That's a good curve ball strike and a count evens at one. Just one home run in the ball game if you join us late. Julio Franco cranking out his 17th last inning. And that pitch off the corner and it's two balls in the strike. Maggie two games under 500 in his career. He has won 39 times and lost 41. There's a shot back through the middle. Viscal didn't get a real good jump on that ball. And the lead man aboard. Short stop number 13. Nice job of hitting here by Lavalier. That fastball was tailing away. Went with it nicely. If he tries to pull that pitch, that's a routine ground ball to second base. So here's Ozzy. Singled and scored in the third, grounded to short in the fifth. And a reminder the luxurious Diamond Suites in Comiskey Park can be reserved for single game rentals. So for more information on this unique party area, just call the Sox Sales Department at 312 924 1000. 
There's a bunt. Maggie's got a shot at second base. They get him. Gonna be a pretty good bunt to get Lavalier over. Second baseman number 20. It's gotta be a great bunt to get him over. Ozzy doesn't deaden it quite enough, and Nagy shows a good athleticism right there. Gets the easy out at second. No chance to turn the double play. So here's Cora. 0 for 3. Tommy on the grass at third. Outfield short. Swung around to the left and bunched. Back doors him with a curveball. Tomorrow night, the game will be over the Baseball Network. Baseball Night in America. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll have all those games coming your way. Right here on Sports Channel from Kauffman Stadium in that big four-game set with Kansas City as Ozzie takes off. Pena with the throw. Two down. Pena comes out of the shoot in a hurry. Ozzy didn't look like he had that bad of a jump. Joey can't find the sinker. Good pitch by Nagy. Hmm. Nine of 28 now thrown out by Pena. There's a ground ball right side. Takes a nice little seven bridges bounce right there for Espinosa, and that'll do it. Nothing across. It was a leadoff single by Michael Lawyer. Nobody left. Seventh inning stretch. Four two good guys. It's the Cleveland half of the seventh inning. Four runs, seven hits, two errors for the Sox. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Tribe. While the Indians, it'll be Pena, Espinosa, then the top of the order, Kenny Lofton to face Alex Fernandez. As the Sox trying to even up this four game set of two games apiece and leave here as they came in with a two game lead. So here's Pena. He's one for two, a single, has scored one of the two Cleveland runs. Thirty seven year old veteran done some damage against the Sox this year. Looks at it low and away. Outfield spread out swung around to the right. As the count moves to two and zero, forty-one thousand eight hundred ninety-four in attendance. Pours that fastball over. That's out of play. Shanks it. Two balls, two strikes. That's Anderson just getting some throwing in down in the pin. Put him away right here, Alex. Well, taking too much time. Yeah. 
Little comebacker. Off the end of the bat. And the lead man down. So a big out for young Alex. And a reminder, behind the scenes tours of Comiskey Park are available through Chicago White Sox Charities. So for additional information and reservations, just dial 312-924-1000. Here's Espinosa. Popped up to right. Granted to second. The down ball, though, got the job done as Pena was at second base. Nobody out. Curveball strike. Off the end of the bat, just foul. Throw the count. Nothing in two. And after this half inning, it'll be Mike Goldberg, the Spiker Roo, back in our studios in Oak Park, bringing you the highlights and the scores around the major leagues. Yeah, he can do it. Crossfire, fastball misses. The ball and two strikes. Another souvenir. And let's check out this year. Last year, 45, 49, four games under. 18 games over. So a swing of 22 games. Amazing. It is? Yeah, I think so. No, they got a couple of good veterans to help these youngsters another souvenir Alex taking too much time. Boy, they're having some problems locking up. Nice set. That's hit hard in the right field. Warren Newsom, he's there on the track. And it's out number two. And this is how you want to see this guy come to the plate. Two out, nobody on. Kenny Lofton, the leadoff hitter. He's one for two. He lined hard to Franco at first, tripled in the third, had a sacrifice fly in the fifth. So Lofton, eight for 14 in this series with a homer and three RBIs to go along with those six stolen bases. And six runs scored in this series. Slow curveball dropped nicely in and over. To the Lofton leadoff on base percentage from the top men in the lineup. Lofton, Bernie Williams, Ricky Henderson. And this is even better. Lofton with two out, nobody on, and an 0 2 count. And let's make this the last time we see Kenny Lofton this year. It's made a believer out of me. Oh boy. Fastball. One and two.
Jammed him. Good pitch in the center field. Darren Jackson's there. Can of corn. One, two, three inning for Alex. And a nice inning for the 24-year-old right-hander. After seven, he leads it. Four to two. Things look good at Jacobs through seven. Let's check our Sherwin-Williams scoreboard. Kansas City Royals score four runs in the fourth. They lead now in the seventh. Kent Herbeck with a three-run shot from Minnesota, but Milwaukee answers with a Jose Valentin three-run homer and a Turner Ward solo shot. Sox got three in the first, a two-run homer by John Valentin. They also have a home run by Mike Greenwell. In the National League, Reds and the Cubs at Wrigley wrapping up their weekend set. They are scoreless in the fourth inning. Montreal's Rondell White, a three-run homer, his first of the year. Expos looking for their six straight. Strawberry and Bonds with RBIs for San Francisco, and the Rockies guys are two games out of first place. Back out to Cleveland, Hawk and the two Guys, Thank you, Spike, and it's the top of the eighth inning here. Sox with that 4-2 to two advantage. Hitting star has been Julio Franco with three, home, three runs driven in on a two-run single and a solo homer. Tim Raines, the other RBI. And Cleveland picked up two runs in the fifth. Indians bullpen, double-barreled activity. Derek Lilliquist is the left-hander. Eric Punk is the big right-hander. So here's the rock, Tim Raines. Timmy, a single, RBI, and run scored in this contest. Takes a strike. Breaking ball from Nagy. Oh, there's that fastball, misses way inside. Frank Thomas on deck and Julio Franco to follow. Sox trying to increase that lead. And a whole lot of noise here at Jacobs Field as the Sox trying to split this four game set against the Tribe. Sox winning game one and losing the next two and now trying to duplicate actually what happened last week at Comiskey Park. Nagy pitched to range, breaking ball just misses the inside corner. A hard slider coming on in on the hands of Rock. Looks like he was going to get a jam sandwich had he swung at it. That's inside. Breaking ball in the dirt. So the count full on range. Nice to get this leadoff man on with the big boppers coming up. There's Frank Thomas as the sun breaks in and out here. They do have the lights on, but it's much brighter now than it was about a half hour ago. No rain. Breaking ball grounded foul. Oh, he hung that one. Timmy just a bit out in front of it. Two fastball ripped in the right center field. Solid single for Reigns. Backhanded by Ramirez. And Lofton backing up. So Tim Reigns is two for four. And the Sox have eight hits off Nagy. Big Frank, the hitter. 0 for two, a couple of strikeouts, a walk, and a run scored. He's hitting at 374 as he stands in. Fastball, he takes it up and in. It's like Frank so far today. See the top hitters versus right-handers. O'Neill at 399, Lofton 378, Frank Thomas and Wade Boggs both at 363. Minimum of 200 bats. 
Oh, no. 2 and 0. Oh. So Frank finally gets that positive count in his favor. He's been working behind against Nagy all afternoon. See what happens right here and see if Mike Hargrove chooses for him the bat to face Franco. There's 3 0. Turn him loose. You know what hurts? That gum right. <laughs> Anytime that man wants to swing the bat, it's okay with me. All right, Frank, go ahead and swing now. Put a couple points on the board. We'll all be happy. 3-0. He misses big right there. So the Sox. Only hitter in my entire baseball career of playing and broadcasting I've ever thought that about. Regardless of the situation, I don't care. If he wants to swing the bat, let him swing the bat. Sure. Here's Phil Regan, the vulture. He's also the pitching coach. So they're going to talk about Franco a bit here. Well, what Julio has done his last two at bats, a two run single with two out. And that came in the third inning, and he had a solo homer in the sixth. Looked like the same pitch, basically, that he hit on both occasions a fastball up and out over the plate. Supposed to be sinkers, didn't do it, and juice juiced him. So Franco with those 86 runs battered in has 17 homers career high in that category. 321 hitter. He's not button. Go ahead, put the wheel play on here. Fastballs down low. So Nagy may be, be beginning to tire here in the eighth inning. It certainly appears so, Wimpy. They may be going with him one hit or too long. Yeah. Especially with the success that Franco's had this afternoon. We'll see. Infield looking for two. It's this one in the air right field. And it will slice foul. So 1-1 one, one pitch coming up to Franco. Tim Raines at second, Frank Thomas at first. Nobody out, Sox lead it four to two. Trying to retain that lead in the American League Central. They would go up two games with a victory here this afternoon. But it is not gonna be easy. I think one key thing for Alex, you wanna get the Lofton spot again. He made the last out of the seventh inning. I want to turn that lineup over to get the. There's a ground ball up the middle. Takes Biscal right to the bag. He'll do it himself. 6 3 double play. Reigns in the third. There's a case that Franco just going after the. Pitch down out of the zone, gets himself out. Yeah, he waited. He was very patient those first two at bats, those last two anyway. Got the fastball up and ripped him. So here's Robin, 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout. He takes the fastball outside. First base is open, a right handed hitter coming up next, and Darren Jackson, who hasn't had a whole lot of success against Nagy in his career. No one catches the outside corner, says Rocky Road. Meanwhile, Ventura is 11 for 30 against Nagy. A 
outfield bunch. That sinker misses down and away. Boy, Albert Bell way off the line in left field. Kenny Lofton just a step or two to the right of center field. Manny Ramirez way off the line in right. Tomey's in on the grass, anticipating a possible bump. There's a good tailing fastball. Comes back over the plate. Two and two. Deuces wild. Two, two, two out. Sox coming in number three. Actually tied for second in the American League and hitting 289 with the Yankees. Be trailing Cleveland. Oh, there's a pitch. Good stop by Pena. I think he was blocked by the foot of Robin Ventura. He gets out there and makes it. Prevented a run right here. Look at this fastball. Just hangs on to it too long. Robin at the last second gets his legs out of there. So three and two. Robin, a 327 hitter with runners in scoring position. Payoff. He walked him. And that'll bring up Darren Jackson. Grover giving the signs. There's DJ's numbers on today. He's one for three at a single his last time up. Got a breaking ball up from Nagy and hit it hard up the middle. There's a curveball misses. So Charles Nagy, that pitch tone getting up, up, up. Well, he's not throwing the ball anywhere near as crisp as he was. His fastball is short on that. His breaking ball not as sharp. But, as we talked about, Julio got himself out on that low one. Pretty good sinker right there. Darren Jackson can just follow it off at home plate. So the count even at one. Darren, 23 of his 48 RBIs have come with two out. So he is certainly tough in this situation. There's a breaking ball hit off the end of the bat towards second. Espinoza. Throws him out, so Nagy pitches out of a jam. Sox strand two, and after seven and a half, lead it four to two. Question. Jarvis Gal to lead things off against Alex Fernandez. Fastball just misses at the knees. Here's our game summary. Franco with two hits, a home run, and three RBIs. Alex, 114 pitches through seven. Lofton has a triple and a sacrifice fly. Let's not see him again. 2-0 and oh, that fastball misses outside. Looks like Vizquel's going to be taking a strike here. Right there in the corner. Getting it and throwing it. Ground ball. Good play by Alex. He'll take it. Throw out Fiscal for the first out. A very important out here in the eighth inning. Yeah, Alex squares up to the hitter very well. Gives himself a good chance to help himself on defense. Snatches that one. So that'll bring up Jim Tomey. Tommy is two for three. Two wicked hits his first couple times up. Double and a single. And then he popped to the third baseman, Robin Ventura, last time. Albert Bell on deck. Breaking ball. Yaha. Curveball at the knees inside corner. Nice pitch. Good late movement there. As you look at Albert Bell, who has been stymied. Today by Alex. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. 
Heater misses. One and one. There is activity for the Sox. Kirk McCaskill is the right-hander in the left of your scene, screen. And Paul Asimacher is the left-hander on the right of your screen. Uh-oh, two and one. Popped up right back at us. No play though. <laughs> two and two pitch coming up to Tom Tommy. Sox deep and swung around the pull. He pops this one up. Left field. Tim Raines backing up now. Puts it away. And there's two up and two down. Get away, Alex. July's a real good month for Alex. Nine and one. Three, two, nine ERA in 126 innings. Alex convinced Gene Lamont. I got good stuff. Alex also enjoys pitching in the cold. 50 and below, he's almost unbeatable. Well, that's a good number on July. I did not know that. Ron Storto giving us that graphic, all the information. He's amazing. Here's Albert, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. <laughs> Popped him up. Shallow center, Ozzy's calling for it. And he puts it away. One, two, three inning for Alex Fernandez. We've completed eight from Jacobs Field. Sox lead it four to two. Now Paul Derek Lilliquist coming on in place of Charles Nagy, who went eight innings, giving up four runs on eight hits, three walks, had three strikeouts. So there you see the numbers on Lilliquist, making his 30th appearance, one and three record, 6.53 ERA. Worked in 20 and two-thirds, given up 23 hits, eight walks, 10 strikeouts, and he's picked up one save. So for the Sox, it'll be Newsom, Lavalier, and Ozzie. For the White Sox, the right fielder. As you look at Charles Nagy. And here's the Deacon, he's one for three. Single to lead off that three-run third for the Sox. Alfield swung around to the left. Breaking ball strike. He joined his late Sox with three in the third, one in the sixth. Drives only two tallies coming in the bottom of the fifth inning. Fastball tardy. So very quickly the count, no balls, two strikes to Newsom. And once again, a reminder, our next game coming your way on Sports Channel will be Tuesday. Wilson Alvarez against Flash Gordon in the second of that four game set from Kaufman Stadium in Kansas City. There's a shot on the breaking ball right back through the middle. Made a mistake. And the Deacon made him pay. The catcher is number 10, Mike Lavalier. So that'll bring up Lavalier. He's one for three. Single back in the seventh. He'll be looking to get the Deacon down to second. Tommy in on the grass at third. Squares the butt, takes the ball. 
That game tomorrow night will be over the baseball network. McDowell against Apier. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll have all three of those games for you right here on Sports Channel. Short lead by Newsom. There's the bunt. It's a good one. Lilliquist, only play. Old Espinosa almost threw it away. So the sacrifice, 1 4, with Newsom in the second. Nice job by Lavalier right there, deadening that ball out in front of home plate. Not that easy. Lefty versus tough left handed pitcher. Short come to pass, I think, that he is probably the best runner on the ball. He does a good job when he's called to, called upon. And especially. For a left-handed hitter against left-handed pitching, he definitely is the best bunter on the ball. Oh yeah. So here's Ozzy. Ozzy singled and scored back in the third. He's one for three. Breaking ball pops him up center field. Kenny Lofton. And that's out number two. In case you're looking to the tribe ninth. The schedule hitters are Murray, Ramirez, and Sereno to face Alex. Second baseman number 28, Joey Cora. That'll bring up Joey Cora. He's drawn the collar today, 0 for 4. Twice he's grounded the second, once he's flied to left. And back in the first inning, trying to bunt, popped it up to Paul Sereno. So Joey. Four for 18 in this series. Slider down and in. Big run out there, 28. Pick him up. Two and all the count. Tim Raines on deck if Joy can get aboard. There's a shot in the right field. Manny Ramirez is there, makes the catch, and it'll retire the side. So nothing across for the Sox here in the ninth. They'll go to the bottom of the ninth, leading Cleveland four to two in a big game. Our the, produ well, the producer director of White Sox baseball is James A. Angio. Ron Storto, our graphics coordinator. Our executive producer is John Tui. As we get set to go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Four runs, nine hits, two errors for the good guys. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the tribe. And a pitching change, Whippy, in place of young Alex, who was outstanding once again. He was brilliant. Paul Ossemacher comes in for the 40th time this year. One and through with a two with a 372 earned run average. Ossie has one save, giving up 25 hits in 29 innings. 12 walks, 24 strikeouts. And he is on the pitch to Eddie Murray, who has not done a whole lot of damage from the right side of the plate. Murray, Ramirez, and Sorrento, three scheduled hitters for the Tribe in the bottom of the ninth. So here we go. Strap it down. Sox trying to ear even the series up at two games apiece and lead with a two-game lead in the Central. Murray one for three. Ground ball fair. Bobble control. Long peg. Draws Franco off the bag and they don't get him. Now they got him hung up. Take your time. Too many throws but they finally get the job done. Wow. Boy that thing was almost butchered up. Unbelievable. Meanwhile one out. Well, that's a Keystone cop play right there. Robin going towards the line makes the wide throw. And let's see what Franco does right here. Murray to avoid it has to step inside. So he should be a dead duck right there. But the Sox, well, I'll tell you right here is a dangerous throw. Ozzie, the last guy there. Nobody back at second base. Whew. So Isamacher comes in to get one man. 
And <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but he got it. So another break in the action as Asamaker departs, and we'll be back with the numbers on Roberto Hernandez right after this. Bottom of the ninth inning, and we'll take another look at that play. Error by Robin Ventura, his second error of the ball game, pulling Franco way off the back. Now watch how Murray hits the inside, keeps going to his left. He's committed to second base, has to keep going. They get him in the pickle, get him out. But here's Roberto, Duke. Hernandez is three and three with a 5-1-8 earned run average. You throw those numbers out because he's been great lately. 37 hits and 40 innings of work, 42 strikeouts. He's got the punch out pitch working with those 11 saves. Pinch hitter is Wayne Kirby. For Manny Ramirez, who was 0 for 3 this afternoon. Looks at it down low. How about Roberto? 2 0 with a 0 6 9 ERA. Four saves in his last 12 outings. That's one earned run in 13 innings of work. There's the strike. So if you're scoring along with us, it'll be an error on Ventura and a 3 6. 3-6 put out. Outside, one and one, check that. Two and one to count to Kirby. Well, I'll tell you, this has not been a pretty series. It has not. Whew. Roberto has retired the first batter in each of his last 12 appearances. Yeah, defense has been real shabby. Along with some mental mistakes, good pitch. Two and two fastball catching the outside edge of the outside corner. But what another brilliant effort by young Alex Fernandez. Eight innings, two runs, one earned, six hits, one walk, five strikeouts. When it had to get done, he yeah. did it. Yeah, he did. Full count to Kirby. Tying run to the plate in Paul Sereno. He's one for three, a single, and a run scored back in the fifth inning. Four, nine, and three for the Sox, two, six, and zero oh for the Tribe. Check out our Budweiser White Sox player of the game this afternoon. Indeed, it is a 24 year old right hander, Alex Fernandez, our Budweiser White Sox player of the game. Sereno has got it dialed up. 1 0 the count. One out, bottom of the ninth. There's a strike on the outside corner. He may have just slid into the tag. Kirby did not make a good slide there. He got him on the arm. A pretty good call. 
One and two the count to Sereno. Balls, two strikes, one out, four, two socks. Strike out by Roberto Hernandez. Two down. Tony Pena being called back. Boy, get your red hot right here. Sorrento knows what's coming. And he just can't get there. Boy, that ball tailing away with some heat on it. Plus that location was, oh, yeah. if he doesn't swing, he's going to get rung up. What a pitch by Roberto Hernandez. So Pena, as we mentioned, being called back for Ruben Amaro. Oh, what a big pitch that was. Inch hitting for the Indians, number 30, Ruben Amaro. Tony's up now, though, 39. Look at the location. Plus, as Wimpy mentioned, the gas. Oh, man. He had no chance. I yeah. tell you, there a whole bunch of guys going down on that one. Yeah, yeah. Audacious movement plus heat. So here's Amaro hitting an 071, one RBI. Yes. Stay right there. 0 for 9 for Ruben this year as a pinch hitter. is playable. Robin Venture in foul territory. Yes. So Roberto Hernandez comes on, nails it down for Alex Fernandez of the Sox. Take the finale of this four-game set. They split this series at two games apiece, and the Sox will leave here with a two-game lead. Webby and I will be back to wrap it up. Right now, let's go back to our studios in Chicago and our main guy, the Spikeroo.